Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video we will discuss lead code question 2090 that says k radius sub area averages. So guys this question we will first discuss the brute force approach and we will think that why this brute force approach won't work. Yeah and then we will derive some of the observation and based on the observation we will move forward towards the more efficient or more optimized approach. So yeah guys stick till the end and watch the complete video. Now here you would be given one nums array of a size n and one integer k okay now what you need to do is you need to find the average or the mean mean is nothing but sum of uh, sum of let's say m elements divided by m so that is a mean or average so you need to find the mean at each index with a radius of k towards the left as well as k elements on the right let's uh, try to understand this so you need to find k radius average uh, for all the elements of nums centered at i okay what does this mean so let's say uh, for this given nums array for uh, for uh, index 0 and here we have k equals to 3 now what is the k radius average for index 0 we don't have because we don't have three elements on the left yeah although we have three elements on the right but th we don't have three elements on the left that means we can't find the k radius average for this index and in that case what we do is we simply return minus 1 for this index so that's how if there are k elements on the left as well as k elements on the right then what we would do is we would sum all these elements that's the current element as well as the sum of k elements on the left plus sum of k elements on the right and divide by total number of elements so that is the average of that particular index so we have to do this for all the indices and at any place if there are not uh, the, the k elements on the left or either k elements on the right are not present then in that case simply return minus one so i hope you guys got the, what we have to do in this question uh, so if you take a look at the first example so for this zero index we have already discussed for the first index also we don't have three elements right exactly uh, three elements for the second index we also don't have three elements but if you take a look for the index three yeah we have three elements on the left as well as three elements on the right see 0 1 and 2 there are the three elements on the left 4 5 and 6 three elements on the right for this index 3 so average for this index 3 is nothing but uh, this 7 plus 4 plus 3 this thing so that is 37 divided by 7 how many total elements are there there are seven elements three on the left three on the right and one that is the index element so there are seven elements and yeah that's why uh, 37 divided by 7 that is 5 so here we don't have to return the double uh, value we simply return the integer value of the division so same thing we after 3 the next index is index 4 yeah we do have 3 elements on the left as well as 3 elements on the right so calculate the other sum divided by 7 and you get the answer similarly for index uh, 5 we have 3 elements on the left as well as 3 elements on the right and we perform this k radius average operation now for the next index that is for the index 6 we don't have k elements on the right so yeah we simply return minus 1 and same for 7 and 8 indexes so i hope you guys have understood the question the question is pretty much simple that for each index we have to uh, make a sum of k elements on the left k elements on the right and take the averages okay and then if the elements are not present on either of the side then return minus 1 so yeah guys what you can do is you can simply try to perform this operation for each indices okay that would be our brute force approach so in the brute force approach what you will do is for each i you will find that do we have k elements on the left if yes then sum them then you will find do we have k elements on the right if yes then sum them and in either of the as condition simply return minus one and after summation you simply divide it by the number of elements and get the average right so these things are uh, easy if you go with the brute force approach now guys if you take a look uh, for the constraints here that the n can be up till 10 to the power 5 as well as k can be up to 10 to the power 5 okay now if you do this approach so for each indices that means n right we are traversing for our, all n elements and for all n elements we are uh, checking how many k elements uh, are there on the left and summing them k elements for the right and we sum them so this is our time complexity for the brute force approach that is n multiplied by twice of k because uh, two times we are checking k elements on the left as well as k elements on the right so this turns out to be uh, 10 to the power 10 and that is greater than 10 to the power 9 so if uh, that if we are traversing for more than more than 10 to the power 9 elements then it will surely give you time limit accident that is TLU. so i guess this is a simple brute force approach but we all know that yeah brute force won't work here and it will give you TLU. 
So now we have to find out what is the better way to solve this question. Okay, so let's try to um, uh, take let's try to take one more example and let's try to understand what exactly we are doing here. So here I have taken one example where k equals to two and this is the given number error from index zero up till index eight. Now let's say if you want to find uh, the uh, the k average, so that is the k radius average for the index zero. Uh, since we don't have two elements on the left, so yeah, minus one. Similarly for index one, it's minus one. Now for index two, we what we would do is we would sum all the elements from index zero up till index four. So uh, let me take this. So for this, what we would do? Uh, no, not for this. For this index, that is index two, what we would simply do is we would simply take a sum from here to here. From index zero to index four, because we want k elements, that is two elements on the left, two elements on the right, as well as the current element. We would sum all these elements and divide total number of elements. That is fine. So this is how we would calculate the answer for index two. Now, if you want, if you want to calculate answer for index three, what you would do is, you would sum from here up till here. That is the um, index one up till index y. Okay. Similarly, for this, you will sum. From index two up till index six, right? So same way you can find the k radius for other indices like five, six, seven, and eight. But guys, what you need to observe here is that the sum elements are repeated. What is that? See, uh, let's say in initially you took a sum of all these elements, right? All these elements for index three. Now for index four, what you will do is you will simply discard one element and add one more element. So you took a sum this. So, but the between uh, or the intermediate sum that is two, three, four, and five. They this is same for the uh, next index, right? We simply removed one index and added one more. So, guys, what you can see here is that we can use the sum that was previously calculated by doing some minor changes. So, what is the minor changes? That is the remove one previous element and add one next element. So, by modifying the previous sum or the sum for previous indices, we can get the Sum of k radius on both the side of the current indices, and yeah, if you get that, the only thing we need to do is divide by five and get the mean value or the average value. So, the thing here is that is a repeated sum. This this between sum, this whole complete sum was repeated, right? So uh, even if you check for the index index, let's say index five. So for the index five, what you will do? You will remove one element that was in the current sum for index four, and add one new element. For the index that you are calculating, there. so for the index y, you will add this element, right? So you can see there is a repeated sum, and yeah, we can. What we can do is we can pre-calculate the sum of all the numbers. That is, we can pre-calculate by using prefix sum, right? Because the sum is repeating, so uh, we can. What we can do is we can firstly calculate all sum of all the elements like a prefix sum. Okay, that is the sum of all the elements from starting index zero, to current index y, and then if we want to find the sum of between the sum of elements between the ranges. So let's say for index uh, four, you are finding the sum between the range two to six, between the range two to six. So we can directly get the answer by uh, by minor subtraction using the prefix sum. If you are still confused, let's uh, try to make a dry run. So for the same example, here I have first. This is the example we are given, and here k equals to two, and we uh, this is the prefix sum uh, factor that I have calculated. So what is that? That is uh, that is like uh, starting from one, it is one. And then adding um, this new element two with the previous sum, so it is three. This three plus this three is six. Four plus six is ten. Five plus ten is fifteen, and so on. So guys, how this will help us? So let's say if you want to calculate the uh, let's say let's take a new example. Let's say if you want to get the answer for this for the index five. So that is nothing but sum of indices between three and seven. So what we will do is you will take prefix. Of seven minus prefix of two. Why two? Because we don't want sum of uh, elements up till index two. We want only from three to seven. So seven. So if you want, if you calculate prefix for seven, it will uh, contain all the elements from zero to seven, right? So we subtracted zero to two. So we get the between value three to seven, and then yeah, we divide the answer by five. So this is how if we have calculated the sum by using this prefix sum concept, then we can simply do one. Uh, my one subtraction. So this is a big O of one time complexity. So yeah, for each index, uh, the time complexity reduces to big O of one, and yeah, overall time complexity would be big O of n. So if I show you here that yeah, for this it's minus one. 
for index 2 it is nothing but sum of first k elements right that is uh, current index plus k elements right now for index 3 what we would do is sum of uh, i plus k elements that is uh, 3 plus 2 that is up till 5 3 plus 2 is 5 the sum of 5 elements first 5 elements subtracting this this subtracting this right because we want the range from 2 to 5 for this, uh, 3 we want range from 1 to 5 so we are subtracting the 0th index so we have to subtract here this is subtracting so for the index what we are subtracting uh, s6 that is sum of all the first 6 elements subtracting sum of uh, 0 and 1 index okay so this is what we are doing from because we need uh, for the index 4 we need sum from 2 to 6 so that is sum of all 6 elements removing the 0th index and the first index so that is s of 1 and yeah divided by 5 so guys by using this what we can do is we can easily find the prefix uh, the sum of k ranges for each index using this prefix sum right and yeah this formula for this is a simple sum of all the elements from 0 up till 1 i plus k subtracting sum of uh, elements from 0 up to i minus k minus 1 so yeah, we get the desired range so this is nothing but the k elements on the left and k elements on the right for the current index i and then we divided by k plus k plus 1 right these are the total number of elements we would be having and then we would get the answer so now coding for this solution is very much easy okay so uh, this is the base condition if k equals to 0 then return nums because uh, the average is uh, uh, would be this as the elements itself let's say 1 2 3 and but k is equals to 0 then what you will take the average yeah there is no elements to take the average so the answer would be same as nums okay so now the next thing is if 2 multiplied by k plus 1 is greater than n so this uh, this only means let's say here if uh, if k equals to 2 that means we want two elements on the left as well as on the right but n equals to 3 so this for this condition we'll check whether do we have enough elements for on the left as well as the right for any one of the index if we have then we have to calculate the answer but if we don't have why to calculate and simply return minus 1 right because we don't have enough element for each indices we don't have let's so yeah that's why we return minus 1 now then we calculated the prefix sum okay the prefix sum is uh, so for the uh, zeroth index prefix sum is same as the nums of y and for each other indices it is nothing but the previous sum plus the current nums so yeah this is how the previous sum the current nums plus previous sum they will give you 6 so 6 plus 4 10 10 plus y is 15 so this is nothing but previous sum plus current of nums right so that's how we calculate the prefix of i now this is the same as this formula so if you want to find so we started from k because uh, before uh, the means what all the value or the indices before k would uh, the averages would be minus one that is nothing uh, new here the, uh, so we have to start from k up till n minus k correct because uh, after that that would be less than k elements on the right hand side so yeah this is the boundary uh, or the range of indices that we need to calculate now here we check for the left bound so the left bound is nothing but the elements that we have to remove so that is i minus k minus 1 this is this thing and this is the right bound and we simply subtract the sum okay right bound minus left bound so in in a case if left bound is less than 0 okay in that case we would simply take the right bound so here for this we simply took the right bound right because there was no left bound it was uh, so it was minus 1 right left bound for this it was minus 1 so there is no need to consider that and for all other elements we would simply do right bound minus left bound like this this is this right right bound minus left bound and then take the division and you get the average and yeah update the average of i to the current average and we return the average is add so i hope you guys have understood this approach right it was very much intuitive to write the code this way because we can we could see that the sum was repeated right now talking about the time and space complexity the time complexity here is big of n plus n so one we are using prefix sum and then we are calculating averages so uh, in the worst case it would be n plus n and then the space complexity is big of n because we are using prefix sum vector that's why there is some space complexity now guys what if i tell you that we can perform better right we can uh, we can reduce this time uh, the space complexity uh, to big of one so there is still some optimization required here now let me show you what is the optimization okay so what we can do is we can convert this prefix sum into the sliding window so what is sliding window sliding window is nothing but one variable that consists of a, a sum from a range l to r 
so let's say we have calculated uh, we have calculated from a sum from index 0 to index 4 let's say that sum is x some x value x okay now if you want to calculate the sum from range 1 from until this range from index 1 to index 4 what you would do is you would simply do x minus this previous element or the discarded element so that is a previous element plus this new element right so you we have here we don't have to store the complete prefix sum or the in the prefix array but we would simply calculate the sum of one window and then using that one window we would keep modifying this value or the we would keep modifying this window right the sum of this window by discarding one element and adding one new element and that's how we would keep updating the sum and yeah that's what we want right we need the updated sum so here we are doing this thing that we are uh, old window that we are using old sum subtracting the this discarded element and adding the new element so this new element we have added and yeah, this will be the sum of the new window right got it so yeah coding for this is also almost similar to that of prefix sum that what we did here is uh, this is the base condition this is the same condition that we checked right now here we took one window sum or, or we calculated the sum of the first window so that is nothing but from 0 up till 2 multiplied by k plus 1 so uh, let's say 0 1 2 3 4 5 so some ele any elements are there and yeah if uh, let's for an example k equals to 2 so what we did here is we calculated the sum up till this right uh, 1 2 8 9 3 inside uh, and store it in window sum right and we know that average of k that is the kth element so that is the second index would be window sum divided by this okay initially all the averages was minus 1 right and we simply update uh, those elements whose windows are possible or whose who have k elements on the left and right so this kth uh, element would have k elements on the left as well as on the right so yeah we calculated this now for the index 3 what we would simply do currently we have this sum right in this window sum so we would update what we would update this window sum by uh, by discarding the discarded element so we will discard this and start our window from here and we would add a new element this right we would add one new element so and our window here so this is our new window and we calculated the sum of this new window from the previous window by discarding one element and inserting the new element and this is this is what we want right so yeah and then we updated the averages right this uh, answer uh, answer vector it is the averages vector so guys there is one more thing to note here is see this is uh, we calculated this uh, for loop for until until this index so the next uh, this is less than so next we will start from here up till end so, uh, because i uh, see a uh, while well, up till end we started from here and this is the end okay this will point to this these this so this will point to the right bound okay this index and we would stop until this right bound is greater than or equal to n so because after this it is not possible so after this here this third is not possible this is not possible right so here we are keeping a track of the right bound in the for the given arrow uh, and yeah now talking about the time and space complexity the time complexity is big of n and space complexity is big of one as we are not showing anything and yeah this is big of n because yeah uh, in the worst case we are traversing only n elements right from zero to this and from this to n so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you